Hey everybody, my name is SW Chris. I'm from SW City, and today we're building the interior of Hyrule Castle Tower, where Link rushes to stop Aghanim from sending Zelda to the Dark World. We're going to start things off at the first floor of the tower. After looking at the map, you'll notice that things aren't quite lining up the same way they do in A Link to the Past. That's because I'm using the A Link Between Worlds version of the first floor of this dungeon. As we go up to the second floor, it's a link to the past all the way. It looks very similar to the map in the top right corner, but I'm building it on a circular base. That's because the square rooms of the original game don't take into account actual geometry. The stairways take up no space at all, whereas in Minecraft, they do. So we're remixing this dungeon and making it into an actual circular tower for aesthetic purposes. The second floor and above will have three rooms instead of four to allow space for the stairways. The little cross-shaped structures on the second and third floors are cauldrons that you'll be able to light with your lantern. This area will be pitch black at first, so be careful when you enter as a wrong step may send you plunging back down into the maze below. And since the second floor is open to the third, and no architect in his right mind would design a building like that unless he were from the universe that Galaxy Quest actually exists in, I decided to turn the maze room into a maze of debris created by the floor above caving in. Moving on to the fourth floor, we use the same line of thinking to add detail, since in the original game, both the third and fifth floors are above a bottomless pit. This staircase leads you into the antechamber of Aghanim. But before we get there, let's take a cue from Ocarina of Time and create a long half-moon staircase filled with stained glass windows. This should give the player a sense of the gravity inherent in the upcoming boss fight with Aghanim. Here is the antechamber with Aghanim's Sheikah eye emblazoned on the floor. And then we see the dais where Zelda gets sent to the Dark World before your very eyes. Up until now, my building style has been very reminiscent of the rest of Hyrule Castle that you've seen built in other episodes. But now, as we go out onto the balcony where the boss fight takes place, I wanted to give a spider-like appearance to the roof and the supporting structure, since I think that fits Aghanim's character quite well. Meanwhile, back inside, I wanted to give the player the sense that they are stepping into a cursed place, and so I went with the menacing cathedral aesthetic. Since the seal of the seven wise men is broken in this room, it only seems appropriate. Now, as night approaches, we're going back down the tower on one final detail pass. On the fourth and fifth floors, we add walls, but in order to suggest that a magical battle has taken place, we blow out two portions of the wall so that in the final version of this map, Hyrule Field will be visible to the player outside. To sell this effect, we place a tattered banner just above one of the holes. Then we build this room's ceiling and add some metal chandeliers so that the fifth floor path is somewhat visible. One of the downsides of recording is that sometimes you make mistakes, and so this shot has no shaders, but it lets you better see what I'm doing here. I'm adding in windows to the fourth floor and intentionally shattering panes in the ones closest to the structural damage that we added earlier. Back down on the third floor, we add banners and a ribbed ceiling. On the second floor, we add a small balcony around the exterior wall just to break up the stone brick texturing and to add more visual interest. We reverse the pattern on the interior wall and place the balcony structure on the third floor and the banners down below on the second floor. Finally, we head down the stairs to the first floor, detailing as we go. I like the chiseled blocks, so I use them a lot along with stone slabs. These staircases are also one of the only places where an open flame cauldron can be found. Here's a brief look at the internal structure of the tower. Those three tubes are staircases. 
They look a lot like the staircase I just showed you, so I opted not to put them on video. We close off the first floor with a rib ceiling. Next, we add some balcony structures and top it off with columns and lights so that when you first enter this tower, you get a proper first impression. You'll notice I'm not detailing the exterior of the tower. That's because this structure will serve as the interior only. The exterior will be decidedly smaller so that it doesn't end up dominating the landscape of Hyrule Field. Using Minecraft command block magic, we can make Hyrule Castle into one giant medieval TARDIS. Next time, we'll work on the exterior of Hyrule Castle and perhaps even put a ceiling on the actual castle itself. Now one thing has changed since the last episode. Listen, I can't do this for everyone, but by way of example, let me give a shout out to Brotato's cousin Jacob, and Chris is Brotato's real name by the way, so I'm partial. But I'm doing that because Brotato attended my live stream and he asked me to. That's right, I'm streaming my Building Zelda sessions. Unless life ends up getting in the way, you can see me build Zelda live on stream every week at the time and places mentioned down in the description below. As always, I do these videos for your fun and entertainment, so if you are fun and entertained, please like this video and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the other series on my channel as well. I play a mix of Mario, Zelda, Minecraft, and even other games, so maybe I'll see you in the comment sections of one of those too. Thanks for watching! My name is SW Chris. Auf Wiedersehen, Arrivederci, hasta la vista, bye bye.